Everybody listen to We Are Not Wizards. Because we are the best. And we're not wizards. No matter what anybody says. Goodbye. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of We're Not Wizards. My name's Richard. I'll be your host for August. Because we're in August now. The summer is here. It's been a hot one. It's been sticky. It's been uncomfortable. Um, I would be rather kind of awake at night than be awake during the day. And even if I was awake at night, say if I was an owl, I'd probably be like a grumpy old owl anyway. Um... <laughs> And with that in mind, we have somebody who's moved from being a jade owl to being a grumpy owl. Um, I've j- I'm joined again by Jeremy Falger, who um, successfully launched his Kickstarter campaign for his card game Untamed, and he's back on to give us a little catch up on that. So, first of all, how are you doing? Are you well? Ah, uh, yeah. Very well. We had a crazy successful campaign that, that sort of exceeded everything I ever dreamt of. So yeah, I, I, I'm doing pretty well, and thank you for having me again. No, um, no, it's good. To, it's good to have you back on because um, we spoke a long time ago. In fact, I think it was like September last year yeah, I think so. when I was um, fawning over the art that you had for Untamed. So. You went to Kickstarter, you funded, and then some. I think you ended up with about was it fifty four thousand yeah. dollars or something? Um, yeah, something like yeah, fifty four k. Yeah. Um, but the game itself was only kind of the pledge levels were really low. It was only like sixteen dollars a time. Uh, yeah, yeah. We wanted to offer really. Um, competitive and appealing uh, appealing price to people uh, you know maybe have a sort of a change of pace uh, with all those yeah. huge uh, mini uh, miniature games going on um, um, but and apparently caught on <laughs> <laughs> how did you feel when you hit the kind of the funding goal and and you know the game started to really kind of gain some traction and there just seemed to be backers coming in one after another was it was it kind of like it must have been extremely exciting at the time, and obviously maybe a little bit kind of overwhelming as well? Oh uh, yeah, for sure. For like, I have uh, for sure. I was. Um, it, it was it was a crazy experience. It, it was it was kind of surreal. Um, you mm. know, like we had been working on it for such a long time, and then to actually see all these people be so enthusiastic about your your product, right? Which up until then basically only existed in, uh, in, in, in our minds. It's, 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 it's so crazy. And, um, yeah, I still can't really believe that we did it. Uh, <laughs> all my friends were like, Oh my God, Jerry. And I was like, oh, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, it, it was super, it, it was super cool. Something, um, uh, something unforgettable for sure. Uh, how quickly yeah. did you? Um, how quickly did you fund? At the time, was it in whether the first couple of days, or was it in the first couple of hours, or how long did it take? Uh, two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah that, that was it, absolutely that was ridiculous. Because <laughs> you must have just uh, seen, you must have just seen the kind of bing, 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 bing. bing as the kind of the pledges came in as you get the notifications yeah. coming in as well it must have been absolutely amazing yeah it was like <laughs> it, 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 i was afraid to look at my phone because there were so many <laughs> coming in i thought something had broken or something i don't know it was it was, it was incredible to see this uh, support um 
you know, of course, uh, there were some friends and family who were really enthusiastic, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, there were also people from Australia and I don't know mm-hmm. anybody in Australia. So, um, you know, it, yeah, it was super, it was, it was incredible. Could you end it up with like about well over 400 kind of comments on the kind of the campaign? Mm-hmm. Um, and there seemed to be like a really kind of active kind of community kind of all the way, all the way kind of through. Did you, find that you were kind of starting to get people who were just there to support you, who were wanting to offer kind of help in terms of kind of play testing and looking at the rules and helping with other things? Uh, yeah, yeah. We had lots of people just offer their help and, you know, they were so enthusiastic and pumped about the game that uh, they wanted to help us out with everything, which is, yeah, <laughs> again, so humbling. Uh, you know, you know, you're just a bunch of guys putting out a card game, and then all of a sudden you have all these people wanting to help you and support you. And you know, they're they're also posting all these crazy things on Reddit because we had like um, our stretch goal system was a little bit different. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it was more of like a uh, um, more community driven, I think, a little bit. In in that, we yeah. also wanted some funny things. Uh, just like, you know, post some really badly drawn cats on Reddit or so, or stuff like that. And people were really doing that, which was really cool, <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we're really happy that people reacted so well to it. Um, but, yeah. I mean, one of the, one of the wonderful things about the game, one of the things that kind of first struck me was the kind of the quality of the art. I mean, it really kind of, <coughs> was head and shoulders. I mean, people were obviously pledging because they loved the kind of the art style and the way it looked and everything like that. Um, did you, when you started to hit kind of like stretch goals, did you then have to kind of start considering kind of the additional animals you were going to kind of add in and things like that as well? Uh, well, I mean, like from the get go, we, we uh, decided not to do any additional uh, factions uh, mm-hmm. So not add any new animals. Uh, we mm-hmm. had a few um, content stretch goals prepared, but it was more um, um, like working with the content that we already had, um, mm-hmm. adding some adding some more game modes, adding sort of like an overpowered mode, um, mm-hmm. which was the Mythic uh, expansion. Um so, you know, sort of like a silly addition to the game, uh, just for fun. Um, because, like, the the artwork, uh, I mean, we're obviously super happy with the artwork, but it just takes a lot of time. Mm. And yeah. uh, we want to deliver the game on time. Yeah. Without, and, you know, I've, I've seen other projects sort of get stuck in, oh, let's just add a whole bunch of stuff. And, it's, you know, yeah. it, it takes another yeah. year for them to actually deliver the game because they have, you know, you have to commission new artwork and good artwork takes yeah, time yeah. and stuff. You don't want to. Yeah. Um, so um, we commissioned one extra piece uh, during the campaign, which was the the final content stretch goal. Um, and we had like an artist on standby for that. Thank you, Andrew. You did an amazing job. Um, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Um, yeah, Andrew Zoman, he, he, he worked super hard throughout the campaign mm-hmm. to get, to get us like, um, um, get us everything on time. Um, but yeah, we, like we, we decided, even though a lot of people wanted it and we would, we like, ideally we, we would have also wanted it, but, uh, it, like just time, timeline wise, I don't think it was a, um, a very good idea to, um, to, to promise that as well. Yeah. I've seen campaigns kind of suffer because the, um, I guess the need to kind of add, to feel that you're adding value, they end up going Mm -hmm. down the line and saying, oh, look, we can produce, you know, three more characters or ten more characters, and then they realise they've got to get the art sorted out, they've got to get the time on it getting developed, they've got to balance all the gameplay. Right. And I've seen seen games that you were pretty much ready to go, kind of all of a sudden, kind of add on like six months to the actual kind of completion time, which hasn't been... Which has never been kind of amazing. Um, yeah. In terms of the kind of like delivery, where are you in terms of kind of like the kind of getting the product 
product kind of fulfilled to the customers in terms of the design? What's your kind of your timetable? Is it still you still quite at the beginning of things, or you? Um, because it's a card game, is it quite easy to kind of get it kind of fulfilled and out to the customers? Uh, well, we're in the middle of uh, pre-production now, so we're getting in uh, mm-hmm. the factory samples and like white samples, right, mm-hmm. of the box, um, tweaking some stuff where necessary. Um, mm-hmm. But I think we're moving ahead pretty much on schedule because, you know, like we didn't do all that extra content. I mean, yeah. we have ideas for extra extra factions, of course, but we, I mean, we just didn't do that. Um, uh, so I, I think we're pretty much um, on schedule. I mm. mean, we're printing in China, so obviously um, there might be delays with shipping or yeah. assembly stuff like that. But at the moment, <laughs> um, at at <laughs> the moment, fingers crossed. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Lots of them. Um, uh, I think uh, I think we're doing okay. Cool, cool. Um, have you, with this being successful, has this made you think about um, kind of expansions and things like that? About where you're going to go with the game? Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, uh, I think we have several things planned. We can't really reveal all that much, but. Um, mm. Uh, yeah, we would love to do an expansion for, for the game, add a few more factions to it, mm-hmm. um, and maybe uh, also expand the IP into other uh, games, other products. Um, cause people really seem to like the vibe that we created. Uh, people mm-hmm. were asking for like lore, which we've mm-hmm. been working on, um, but we're not really ready uh, to, um, to share that yet. But um, it's 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 definitely something we're thinking about, and would love to uh, push on forward um, with in the future. Are yeah. you thinking about kind of like? Are you now thinking about the minis game? I mean, <laughs> with you, have, I mean, if we look at it, I mean, let's face it, you did have. If we scroll, let's do this in real time. Did it? Did it? Did it? Do. You had seventeen hundred people, yeah, kind of back you. Yeah. So, does that not give you the confidence to say, okay, well, maybe the next thing we can do is we can do a little bit of a skirmish game here, or we can do some kind of resource management game, or maybe there's a worker placement game, and you can actually this time promise like the kind of the little miniatures kind of here, there, and everywhere instead. If you thought about kind of doing that, then. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I would be lying if I hadn't thought about the Untamed miniature game, and have a whole bunch of uh, little grumpy owls and foxes I I and rabbits. Uh, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I would be lying if if uh, if I would if I said we weren't. Um, mm-hmm. Nothing to announce, uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. I, I've I've been uh, I've been thinking about it for sure. Um, yeah, I, I think it would be really fun. Um, mm-hmm. to do something like that. Um, uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm open for that kind of thing. Has it given you a little bit of a um, a kind of more breathing space and leeway in terms of what you're doing on a kind of a day to day basis as well, or is it is this actually taken away from the you know the job job? Because when people maybe don't remember, but last time we spoke, you were kind of involved in. Um, a lot of gamification stuff and businesses yeah. and stuff like that as well. Um, and that was one of the things that you you were kind of doing as a, as you know, one of your, what was part of what you were doing is kind of like a main job. Um, has the Kickstarter been like a double edged sword? Have you ended up having to spend an awful lot more time kind of sorting that out? And has that had an effect on kind of what you do on a day to day basis? I mean, leading up to the Kickstarter, for sure, you know, like uh, mm. Untamed was like the main the main show. Uh, after mm. the Kickstarter uh, has ended, I think we're sort of back to to where we were, which is not a bad thing necessarily. I think it also keeps you mm. fresh a little bit if you're working mm. on like different projects with different kind of clients. Um, I mean, I think in the in the long term, things might shift in one direction or another. Uh, at the moment, it's still it's it's um, it's uh, 
pretty evenly split at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and the gamification things has um, has brought some new interesting challenges as well. So, are you um, are you finding there's a steady sto steady source of work coming from the gamification stuff? Is it still something that you need to actively be kind of pitching and persuading people to take on? persuade the concept or are people more open as board games get more and more popular I, I, I think um, everybody's getting more open to it also like I think mm. in general society is, is opening up to games more um, yeah. as you know people my age are now you know in charge of things and they like games so yeah. It's more, <laughs> it's more, yeah, I think it's more acceptable, which makes our, um, uh, our work on that end a little bit, a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, people willing to try new, new things when it comes to training their staff or training yeah. students, um, teaching them certain, th yeah, certain things. Um, and, you know, I, I think there's a spot for it. I don't think it fixes, you know, like, I don't think games can teach you everything, but I think yeah. certain specific uh, parts um, um, you can add value uh, with games that way. And we try to like highlight those um, those parts. Uh, what you can do that. Have you found that um, is it a certain type of business that takes you up on the gamification type of thing? Is it a certain sector of business that you've ended up? kind of working with like say the education side of things or you know as an IT you know or, you know is there a particular sector that you seem to be kind of growing in with regards to that side of the business um, at the moment we're um, doing some stuff in the healthcare side of things mm -hmm. um, um, so we're pretty proud of, of this of this educational game that we did for a few universities here in Holland um, yeah. with regards to um um, public health uh, and how to deal with an out uh, with an outbreak, uh, yeah. like a, like a flu epidemic. Um, mm -hmm. But we're also doing some other things in that field. So at the moment we've been um, we've been focused on that a lot. But I I still believe that there's other uh, other sectors that could also benefit or yeah. you know might be interested in in trying this kind of approach. Um, so, uh, I don't, I don't think we want to limit ourselves to, to just the healthcare, even though it's very interesting, um, mm -hmm. very interesting mm -hmm. sector. Mm -hmm. Have you got like an ideal client or an ideal sector you'd like to work in? I mean, would you like to be rolling into the kind of the government defense contracts or something like that? <laughs> or is there a, uh, you know, I actually, uh, used to. Do some work for a government organization for defense departments and stuff, which I'm not allowed to talk about. But uh, <laughs> I signed a signed a piece of paper. Um, it, it was very cool. It was, it was very fun. Um, uh, actually, like historically, the military is like uh, the most open to these kind of things. You know, like back mm. in like when Prussian generals were in charge of stuff, they did a. You know, I think they did the first like kind of war game uh, simulation. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, defense is super cool. Um, I, th I think ideal client um, just gives us a lot of room to also be creative. I mean, you still want to yeah. like get those um, get those learning goals uh, mm -hmm. woven into the whole mechanics, but um, yeah, yeah. Uh, they would give us a little bit more. Um, freedom in other areas maybe uh, less time constraints or more open to um you know maybe a little bit closer to um to the board games um that you see in shops maybe in terms of artwork i think that would be very cool yeah. if there's a budget for yeah. that you know i i understand it's it's mm -hmm. a big big chunk of money um but i i think that could be really cool um yeah, and it's usually the functionality, isn't it? I mean, they're not going to be particularly happy if you're kind of going over the costings of the project and saying, right, right well, to develop this, it's going to be, you know, 
uh, five five to ten thousand euros but to get the artwork in we're going to need another three thousand euros on top of that and they're just like you're not getting that money <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> There's no chance you're gonna gonna get that money yeah. at all. Um, have you had a chance to be still been playing anything? I mean, obviously you've had the kind of the Kickstarter that you've had to deal with. You've had to. Um, you've obviously got the ongoing kind of business that's going with. As I say, you've moved from being a jade owl <laughs> to a grumpy owl. Sure. Yeah. Um, is that because you got less sleep while you were doing the Kickstarter <laughs> and you? Just- and <laughs> you just shouted at folks said, Jeremy, you're not you're just not as you're just not as nice and serene and green as you used to be. You're just a little bit shouty. And you went, That's a good idea. Um yeah, that's good okay. Now go away while I change my company name. I mean, was that Oh yeah, I, I didn't sleep a lot for sure during the Kickstarter. I think none of us did uh um just you know going over all these comments from people in your mind and oh, I need to answer them right away. And, uh, you know, even though they're in a completely different time zone, I have to answer them right away. Um, I did uh, notice that you kind of like, I don't think anybody was able to looking at the comments here. It is kind of like you're replying to every single person pretty much as soon as they left a the comment. So I don't <laughs> think there was, cause usually on Kickstarters, it's usually a case there's like three or four people that'll comment on something and then what will happen is that you'll end up kind of getting um, you'll end up kind of getting folk like yourself kind of like the creator will catch up and they'll do the replies then but on mm-hmm. this you just seem to be kind of like somebody asks a question bang you're straight in there with a <laughs> straight in there with a reply <laughs> you didn't kind of let the you didn't kind of let the pixels kind of dry on the screen <laughs> Before you were kind of answering, you were kind of answering the questions, which was quite um, kind of interesting. Um, with it being such a, such a success, was there pressure for you to kind of do multiple translations of the game itself, or did it need a lot of translations? Because you know, it, there seems to be a lot of iconography in there. There doesn't seem to be, from what I can see. Um, a massive amount, there's a little bit of flavour text here and a bit of effect, but did you then have to look at kind of um, translations for the game as 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 you kind of gathered pace, as you were hitting kind of like your 15,000 target, your 25,000 target, you went, ah, oh, people are going to be wanting this in French. Oh yeah, they, they, they definitely wanted it in French. Hopefully still want it in French. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I, I we we had loads of requests also like in personal messages and stuff like that in direct messages. Mm. Um, I mean, we would love to do that. I I, I do think the game is um, pretty pretty language dependent. Um, yeah. The effects are. I I don't think we could do the effects with iconography. Uh, we thought yeah. about it, but it was going to be a mess. So, um, yeah. I mean, yeah, we would love to localize it. Um, mm. But also for our own sanity's sake, um, and you know, I mean, we're still a really tiny little company, right? So, um, yeah. just in order to get the game out there and get some experience with actually, you know, shipping and logistics and all that, uh, we decided to just keep it in English for now, keep it a bit yeah. manageable. Um, of course, if people are interested, if partners are interested in doing a local version in Italian or French or yeah. Polish or whatever, you know, um, we're very interested in that. Uh, um, but just um, like within the scope of the campaign, it was very tempting to do that. But um, just to keep things manageable and to hopefully deliver the game yeah. on time, we, yeah. we, uh, we declined that. Or the, yeah, I mean, in in some ways, it's understandable. It's different. I think there's a massive difference if you were like just having to translate the rule book, right? Right. Um, and if you know the tokens and everything like that, if you got away with a lot of the tokens, and if it was like standees, and if it was like maybe mm-hmm. a, a slightly different game, but if mm-hmm. you're looking at kind of like action points on the cards, then and the thing with translations is. 
I see it all the time is that somebody will put a translation in and it will be taken slightly the wrong way. It <laughs> won't be a hundred percent well translated. Mm-hmm. And then what will happen is you'll get you get somebody complaining kind of like six months down the line to say, Well the translations they weren't that amazing. Here's my set of translations that you right. should be using <laughs> instead. So you kinda get that you kinda get that thing kinda get that thing instead, you know. Um, yeah. which is you know, which is I guess it's just kind of one of those things. Um as a going back, have you had a chance to play anything? <laughs> I mean, have you managed to get anything to the table at all? Uh, uh I guess. I'm not I'm not <laughs> really sure. I'm looking at my at my shelf right now and I'm I don't really remember pulling out all of that all that many games. <laughs> um I I played um I played Battle for Rokugan a few times. Um uh-huh. which is like this really cool um uh, area control game um by yeah. uh Finish Flight. And I, I loved it. I, I I I really enjoyed it, like the whole sort of blind uh blind um uh, simultaneous action uh, selection mm-hmm. and revealing mm-hmm. the bluffing and stuff. I, I love that stuff. So I was really pumped about that. Um I I must have played other stuff, I don't remember. Um, played some Conduchera, which is always good. Yeah. Um, super tense. I really like these tense games, you know, where you like you never feel safe. And I think yeah. uh, Battle for Rogagon has that, and mm. uh, Conduchera has that. I played um, High Society, like the new edition. Oh yes. Uh, that's a super intense little game. <laughs> uh, that was that was crazy. Uh, I played it. I played that at Aircon um, with Dan. With Dan Hughes, and uh, you're right because at the beginning you're kind of like, um, okay, when I'm going to play this, and then I'm going to play this, and then if I play this, can you give me the change? And it's like, no, you don't. Yeah. You don't get the change. <laughs> you yeah. played that card down, so I obviously lost, right. and I lost extremely well <laughs> because I had, I think, I'd spent pretty much all of my money, so I automatically kind of lost. But the um, the artwork on the cards was absolutely super good. stunning. It was beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah, it was beautiful. Oh, and, and this other super tense game that just popped into my head was The Estates. I don't know if you had a chance to try that. I just played one round. I've heard that, was, that, yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was also uh, gut-wrenchingly intense. Um, <laughs> that, was, that, was really, that was really good. That was really good. Um, Is there anything you kind of got your eye on at the moment that you're wanting to, to kind of get your hands on? Um, n- not really, to be honest. Um, I, uh, I don't, I know, no, I don't think so. That, I, don't know, I mean, <laughs> but there's so much stuff, I mean, so much stuff has come out of the, uh, come out the past few years that I, I have, yeah. I have, I still have a bunch of catching up to do, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I would still like to play Evolution. That seems like a game that that tickles my fancy. Um, yeah, I've heard some good uh, things about that. I've heard it's pretty. I heard it's kind of pretty good fun and pretty yeah. enjoyable. But um, I'm kind of in the process of managing my collection right. a little bit more vigorously and kind of looking at games and kind of going. Hmm, I don't think I'm going to play that. I'm just going to kind of get it, kind of get it out the door. Right. Um, and just try to get everything that I've got kind of that I have got to the table at least a couple of times to help me decide if I want to kind of if I want to kind of keep it um which is just you know just kind of one of these mm-hmm. one of those things um where's next for the company i mean you've got to get the kickstarter obviously out the way yeah and and kind of fulfilled have you already got kind of like got the next game planned, or have you had to reassess that based on the success of Untamed? Because I don't think people go into kind of like the first kind of project going, oh well, um, oh I've I've kind of all of a sudden collected seventeen hundred backers and over fifty thousand dollars. I don't think people kind of go into their first campaign <laughs> expecting that to kind of happen. So have you had to reassess kind of? the direction that you're going to be going in for the company then? Yeah, I, I mean, we obviously didn't uh, expect this success, so 
Uh, we've been talking internally what we want to do. Um, mm-hmm. And we have some ideas. So, you know, like an untamed expansion is pretty high uh, up on that mm-hmm. list. Um, and then expanding the universe uh, in whichever way possible. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but there aren't any concrete plans for that, except that we would like to do that. Um, yeah. I think we're still, I, I like, I mean, like after the Kickstarter, we had like a short little tiny holiday break type thing. And then we yeah. went straight back into pre-production. So, um, and, and some other projects that, um, in the serious gaming field that came along. Um, mm-hmm. so we're still sort of assessing, uh, what we want to do, um, and what our next step will be will be in the Kickstarter realm. But I, I think it's important to also, you know, actually deliver the game first before we start planning a super elaborate miniature game with 150 minis and a box that, you know, can't get shrink wrapped yeah. because uh, there's so much stuff in it. So, um, and um, I, I think it's also important to keep supporting the, the product that you have, right? I, I Yeah. Um, you know, like some bigger publishers, they push out so much new stuff that it's you know it's very overwhelming. And then I'm seeing, I'm seeing at the moment kind of very very exciting games with a lot of noise, and then they're just like kind of disappearing. Right. And then it's only when it's only after a while that kind of people start to pick them up again and say, actually, this is a good game, and it's kind of like worthwhile. Um, it's kind of like worthwhile hanging on to. It's kind of like worthwhile getting, and I'm I'm seeing kind of that. But yeah, there seems to be a lot of like big explosions and people going, "Hey, look at this!" And everybody gets really, really excited, and then it just—it's not even a case that it dies down. It just seems to fall off mm-hmm. a kind yeah. of a cliff for yeah, a lot I, of things, which is a yeah, for sure. I agree, and I think that's a shame, right? Because a lot of work went into all those games, and then a month mm-hmm. later, they're totally evaporated it seems like so um i i think one of our goals is also to um to turn the current game into uh, a, a sustainable sort of mm-hmm. well evergreen is a big word but um yeah that would i think that would be the goal um mm-hmm. to to make it a sort of a mainstay in people's minds um, mm-hmm. um which i think might not be possible if you completely rush into the next big project, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, but I've yeah. seen that happen as businesses can trying to make kind of maintain a kind of a business strategy and a business plan that they go from one Kickstarter to the next, fulfilling it, right. launching their next campaign as a kind of a um, is almost like as a as a way of kind of continually funding kind of what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I mean, you only. I mean, the game only, the project actually only funded at the beginning of the month. So right. you had to go, obviously, through this two-week waiting period before you got the money. Mm-hmm. Was there any point where you went, where's the money? <laughs> <laughs> when's, uh, when's, it, when's it coming in? <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> but then on the other hand, you know, we were still so sort of like stunned that we actually yeah. hit this goal that it was like, it, you know, it, it, like, it, is it actually coming? I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was all just a dream, you know? So, um, <laughs> did uh, you, um, did you take a screenshot of your bank account when the money hit? Uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we did. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, just to remember what it actually, you know, that we had that yeah. amount on our bank account because we're spending most of it on printing and stuff. So it was only there you know, for you know a few few moments. I know, and then you've got a press a button and your kind of tears are streaming right. out of your eyes while you can <laughs> right. send it through. And they're like, okay, there's your money, and you can kind of can kind of take it. I know that's happened to a lot of people that they've kind of, you know, this is the first time in their life that they've actually had that amount of money in their bank account. They're just sitting there going, wow, this is really tempting. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. The Ferrari, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, no. Really, let's face it, for that kind of money, you can probably get an apartment. So, you know, <laughs> realistically, you can't really get kind of a good car for 50,000 nowadays. Yeah. Um, 
True. You know, but you've got that, you've got that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> is there anything you would have done differently in terms of the marketing side of things? Because I don't remember there being a massive amount of noise about the game when you were doing the campaign. I seem to remember that it was one of these ones that just seemed to just grow through kind of word of mouth. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had a few, you had a few people kind of, um, you know, write previews and do some videos and stuff like that for you as well, Mm -hmm. but there wasn't a massive amount. So was there anything you would do differently that you've learned that you would do differently for the next campaign? Can you go in forward? Yeah, start earlier. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I, I, I think that's the basis of it. It was uh, time constraints, um, mm-hmm. money constraints. I mean, let's be honest, yeah. uh, marketing is expensive. Um, um, yeah, like prepare better. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, I, th- I think it might, you know, as a first time creator, it's, it's, I think it's also just harder to get more coverage. Um, yeah. I'm not sure how other people do it. They might be like marketing geniuses or something, but I, I, um, I, I think they start like months in advance. Right. I mean, I, I, I get kind of a lot of emails on a regular basis every week now. To say, hi, we've just launched our campaign and we're looking for kind of coverage. And Mm. we are like, we record like, I mean, we arranged this, what, like a month and a half ago or something like that? You know, six weeks ago or something like that. Uh And you just don't have the space, the time or the bandwidth to just like drop everything and have somebody come on the show to kind of help it. Right. Um, so I guess kind of reaching out as kind of like as quickly as possible would be kind of helpful. Um, have you thought about um, distribution side of things? Are you looking at considering that? Are you looking at retail? Are you looking at anything along those lines at all, Jeremy? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think that's part of uh, of the of, of of our idea of making Untamed like uh, you know not fall off the. Mm-hmm. The edge of the earth after two weeks is by getting it into uh, retailers' hands and getting it into distributors' hands. So yeah. um, um, we're very interested in, in, in pursuing that, um, mm. and hopefully that'll pan out <laughs> for us. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're setting up meetings for for Spiel and Essen, and um, yeah. hopefully, I mean, I, I think it's good to also like show your product face to face. You know, see mm-hmm. people's reactions to it face to face, but yeah, it's 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 definitely on our minds, and it's something we're we're focusing on um, mm-hmm. going forward. Cool, yeah. excellent, excellent. Um, if people are wanting to keep an eye on yourselves, because you've got late pledges as well. Yes, I'm going to drop yeah. that in here. That if yeah. you want to jump in. For a late pledge, it's um, sixteen euros, isn't it? Roughly. Yeah, and and shipping. And shipping on top of that, so it's pretty yeah. much. Well, at the moment, because of the way the British pound is, and because our country is a small <laughs> disaster, you know that is pretty much kind of like sixteen pounds. You know, right. <laughs> directly, it's almost like it's a one-on-one kind of conversion, conversion. rate at the moment. Not saying anywhere, but you know. But thanks very much. Um, <laughs> But if people are interested in um, kind of checking out the rest of your stuff, what's going to be happening with Untamed and things like that, where can we kind of find you on the internet? Um, so at the moment, we're uh, redoing our website uh, to be a bit more mm-hmm. informative and show a little bit more content. So grumpyowlgames.com will mm-hmm. be the best website on the internet soon, but not yet. <laughs> um it's not as good as our one. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, and um, our um, our social media accounts, uh, particularly the Instagram and the Facebook mm. uh, page, mm. um, are, are are pretty active. We also have a Discord channel. Um, okay. Uh, which was um, yeah, which uh, saw uptick in uh, in uh, people joining, uh, obviously during the campaign. Um, cool. I'm a bit guilty of not being on there the last few days, 
Um, but there's also so much stuff to do. I, uh, yeah. Uh, but I really like to talk to everybody <laughs> on uh, on Discord. Uh, um, so that's a possibility. Um, yeah, I think those are the usual suspects. Excellent. Well, um, we will take those links and put them in the show notes so that we've got notes to show as always um, if you want to keep an eye on what we're up to then go to the internet webs, search for We're Not Wizards and you'll find us in all of these um, worn out places, worn out faces um, if you go to Twitter you'll find us there, if you go to Facebook you'll find us there, if you go to Instagram you'll find us there, if you just search for We're Not Wizards you can find us on our blog which is we're not wizards.blogspot.com and you can find us on our website which is again is we're not wizards.com where you can find all the episodes, if you want to find the episode through a different way you can go to any podcast catcher that um, all of them regardless of whether or not they've got the word pod and the word podcast in them because <laughs> Obviously, I didn't do enough research, and there's tons of them without the word pod or the word podcast in them. There's also um, the wonderful, fantastic um, Apple podcasts, which you can drop us a subscription, or you can drop us a rating, or you can drop us a review. Maybe you can. I don't know. They're kind of changing the system and recategorizing them. We'll just need to see if we can continue on with this joke that we've been running with since the very, very beginning, which is quite simply, if you do like what you've listened to, tell somebody else about it. But the other thing is, if you go into Apple Podcasts, drop us a subscription, but drop us a rating, even drop us a review. If you are going to be giving us a rating or review, don't give us 10 stars, because it makes us big-headed. But at the same time, don't give us one star. Because it makes us cry. Give us something in the middle, like a five. Because it's average. And we're just a little bit average. But the person who's not been average tonight is rather wonderful. Rather fantastic. The fully funded, fully armed. And he shouldn't actually be grumpy, to be perfectly honest. He should be happy. But it's uh, Jeremy Falger of Grumpy Owl Games. Thank you very, very much for coming on, sir. Thank you for having, uh, thank you for having me once again, Richard. <laughs> and I can only wish you the best of luck and as I say if um, if you are interested in getting yourself some untamed you can get the late pledge and we'll put the links so you can get the late pledge it could be fantastic there's only a couple of things left to do the first thing is to remember that we're many things but we're not wizards are we wizards Jeremy? we're not Yay. and the second thing is to say goodbye so it's a goodbye from Jeremy. Say goodbye, Jeremy. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. And it's a goodbye from me. Remember, stay safe. Roll sixes. Make something awful. And don't get something that kind of like will come when you shout at it or sits when you tell it to sit. You don't want something that's kind of just boring and dull and does what you want it to do. You want something a bit wild. You want something a bit untamed. And until the next time, goodbye. Bye-bye. A wizard is never late. Is he early? He arrives precisely when he means to.